Okay, my favorite people, welcome back to the channel. Today is episode four of The Better Project, which is my first ever series released on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out the other three episodes, please do so. And you can still stick comments, likes, and do all the usual stuff on that one as well. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit it for me. That would be very much appreciated. So today we're gonna to cover chest and biceps, uh, cover a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of biomechanics, but for the most part, we're just literally gonna get it done. The reason being is I am feeling a little bit preppy today, which is the first time that that has happened pretty much throughout the entire prep. So I'm thankful for that, but obviously it's one of those days that I'm just gonna to have to tick the boxes, get it done, and then hopefully be able to summarize the session for you guys at the end. So in the meantime, hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, chest or pec anatomy. So we're gonna break it down into two heads, upper and lower in the simple terms. Clavicular head is the upper, so the clavicular obviously originates on the clavicle. Uh, the first half, medial half of the, the clavicle comes across and starts onto the humerus. 
and then we have the lower, which is the sternocostal, so it inserts under the sternum, down through like ribs one to six, and comes across, so it's like a fan shape, which all converges then here under the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. So here we're trying to really favor or bias the upper chest, so we're sitting on an incline bench, roughly around 35 degrees elevation, and apparently according to EMG data that around sort of 33 to 35 degree elevation is the sweet spot to try and optimize or bias the, that, those upper chest fibers. So they also, the, the muscle also helps with medial rotation. So we're talking about with the upper chest, fiber orientation is coming down at an angle here. So it's helping with shoulder flexion and adduction but it also helps with medial or internal rotation. So this is the muscle we're really trying to bias. I like the feeling obviously of a free weight. I just think the stretch is very aggressive at the bottom, which is quite nice. I want to set the rib cage up nice and high, and then just trying to come up and contract in. So we want to keep the shoulders in neutral, so don't try and pin them back into the bench, which I hear people try to describe the movement. Just keep the shoulder neutral and avoid protraction, because as soon as you protract, the serratus interior is going to be a muscle which becomes more active and it leaves an opportunity for the upper chest just to switch off. So just stabilize. One of the cues or visuals that I try and set up with my clients is, once I get into any press movement for my chest, I want to imagine lifting the rib cage, setting into position as if I put a glass of water on the sternum, and as I do the set, I wouldn't want to spill the glass of water, so I don't want the chest butt, like hollowing out and disappearing. So hopefully that little tip helps. So as you can see there, on the, I just did a, a working set, so the target, this is the first week that I've actually got these into rotation again, so the target was 44 kg, it's nothing impressive, but I actually had the target just at 5 or 6 reps, so I hit 5, felt fairly comfortable, probably could have ground out another one on that first set, but then it probably would have maybe sabotaged my potential in the second set a little bit. So we're also adding in a drop set, now on the lighter set I'm trying to uh, moderate the tempo, so I'm setting myself what I consider like a 3 one, two, one. So that means three seconds on the negative, a little one second pause, two seconds. So we're avoiding over acceleration and a one second pause at the top, maintaining elbow flexion as well. So we'll go into the, the second set. We're going to try and just match those repetitions again. All right, let's get after it. Nice and tight. Oop. 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 Nope, I'm going to fight with that one. these temples locked in here. Oof. Two seconds the way up. One second pause. Elbows still slightly flexed. Three seconds the way down. Pause.
That'll do, set one. This doesn't look that impressive, but I know this is going to feel a lot heavier than it should. fatigue creeps up on you. Again, on a machine like this, a cutler, which is kind of like a prime replica to be honest, but with a couple of prime pieces coming in as well, hopefully uh, over the next couple of weeks. So if we're, you are going to load the sort of lengthened range, then make sure that you're actually accommodating that, so making sure that you're actually going deep enough to try and extort a little bit more tension through that muscle. On a machine like this where you can alter the strength profile, if you are trying to intentionally load into that lengthened range where the muscle is actually stretched, then make sure that mechanically you're moving into a position where the chest is actually stretched out. No point loading the lengthened range and then kind of stopping on almost like a half rep. So make sure that with whatever your setup is, that you follow through with action that aligns with your intention for that movement as well. So these were two sets of DAP flies. I'm not going to be bringing the seat's a little bit further out from the DAP, but just because of the angle or the line of resistance, if I pull right in through here, there's not going to be a lot in here because I'll literally be stacking with the line of the cable. So intentionally, I'm only going to be in, trying to exert the tension in that lengthened state. So I'm pulling it through into this space here. So just a simple cue whenever you're in that lengthened range, is just really focus less on the chest because it's hard to sort of internally cue this contraction. Instead, just imagine that, one, you're closing this space off between the inner arm and the rib cage, but ensure that the shoulder is the first joint to actually move, so that is what we're trying to achieve here. I've just set the, the handles up so it's right in the mid portion of that chest, so I should be able to activate into clavicular and sternocostal as well. So these were two sets of 20 reps. Really just trying to open up the chest. This is the last exercise for chest. Cooked. All right, so I'm leaning up where you can see it. So we can see there where the clavicular part of the chest originates. It's crossing the shoulder here on that lateral edge of the bicipital groove. And then we start having the sternocostal. And you've like down the six ribs. Two, three, four, five, six. And then the rectus abdominal sheath. A little origin there. So all that, that muscle comes up across like a fan shape and in. So always throw an exercise in there for medial delt, even on chest day. So obviously the anterior delt, although we're trying to bias the upper chest, the anterior delt and the 
chest have a lot of similar functions so we know that the anterior delt is going to receive some kind of fatigue throughout the course of those working sets so I just like to sort of add in a little bit of medial delt just to try and get those capping a little bit so I've only done one set but the medial delt should be very responsive here in terms of like blood volume and it should get a pump very very quickly so we're just setting up as you see there kneeling on the bench the bench is probably around 15 degrees forward and then from there we're just trying to slightly internally rotate and then just driving the outer part of your hand and your elbow away from that midline and we're not trying to like over elevate or flex the shoulder we're just trying to take it out so the humerus bone is probably around sort of parallel to the floor and then we are trying to control the eccentric before it drops off in underneath the shoulder here so we're trying to decelerate pause and then drive away be really accurate with these anytime you're doing a side lateral raise just be accurate just drive away and then moderate control on that eccentric Again, just with a bicep, obviously elbow flexion, bicep brachii, supination, and obviously a little bit of shoulder flexion. We want to focus on the, the first two there. So we're using the fat grips, a rep range I love using, particularly if you're going to train each arm independently. It's going to be like five reps, four reps, three, two, one. You just feel the intensity build up throughout the duration of the set. And it's kind of a little bit sort of nicer than just the sort of conventional one or you know 10 whatever else so what we're trying to encourage as we talk about on the concentric phase is supination but we also need to make sure that on the eccentric that we're not just controlling the the rate of elbow extension but we're also trying to control how we return back to neutral so we're really locking down those two functions of the bicep rack eye. so controlled eccentric with elbow extension and taking it from supine into neutral. So control that aspect as well.
Yo folks, so that's us done for another episode. This was episode four concluded. So in there as well, we actually had a little bit of an adjustment with Johnny Sinclair from the back clinic in Dunmurray. So lucky enough, Johnny trains here. He's a very good osteopath, well known uh, in Northern Ireland. He treats a lot of sort of top athletes and also me as well. Um, I've been working with Johnny now for the last couple of years, so at least for the six, eight weeks I book in with him. Um, we keep that schedule running. Um, he just runs like a little bit of a MOT, if anything needs adjusted he does so, if not then we're all good. Um, I also work today with Austin Benson who's still in the gym as well, he's a fantastic sports massage therapist, works with the Belfast Giants ice hockey team, um, very good at what he does and I work in with Austin pretty much every Wednesday so he just again gives me the once over and uh, an ethos that we all share is prevention is better than the cure so say to people just stay on top if you're training hard and you're hitting like high volume and heavy weight then just look after the the machine that's doing all those things for you and that's your body um so just to summarize the session chest and biceps broke some stuff down hopefully you took some little bits away and uh, i know that my energy was a little bit subpar it was session one of the new mesocycle so um, i knew it wasn't going to be anything too impressive but I grinded it out anyway and uh, still pushed a lot of those sets to failure, some of which was unexpected failure. But uh, needless to say, I think there was enough stimulus just to maintain the muscle that I have. You know, we're closing in on the final weeks before we actually get on stage and, and showcase the physique. So it's just about ticking the boxes at this stage. So I'm absolutely fine that today happened. And uh, hopefully tomorrow being a rest day will be enough just to reset me a little bit before a nice heavy session or a pool session on Friday. So in the meantime, as always, I'll say it again, subscribe, like, comment, do all the good stuff and uh, have a great time with your training. Hopefully you hit, set yourself numbers, smash the out of it and uh, I'll catch up with you guys very, very soon. Thank you.